Hello my friends and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about my Mart. nope. <laughs> Not March, it's May. Today we are going to be talking about my May TBR and my reading plans for May. Now if you watch me regularly, you know that making a TBR is very, very hard for me. I tend to be a huge mood reader. I like to <laughs> kind of look at my shelves and uh, decide what I'm gonna read right then and there. Like, I'm not very good at planning my reading, except when it comes to planning content. This is kind of coming into play here for May. I do save certain books or plan to read certain books if I have like a vlog idea or if I want to do like a recommendations video or whatever. So a lot of times I am actually pushing myself to read certain books during the month because I want to make certain content. And I've noticed that <laughs> while it does work, it's making me enjoy reading less and less. Unfortunately, I'm not having as much fun reading. I've noticed this year I just am not reading for enjoyment. I'm reading solely for work or videos or content. I'm always thinking about the purpose of the book. Like, what am I reading this book for? Sometimes you don't need a purpose and I'm trying to relearn that because reading has always been my hobby but now with YouTube it's become my job. I kind of had this realization with the spinner wheel. That was so much fun for me. Doing the spinner wheel reading vlog really helped me enjoy reading and even though I didn't enjoy all the books I read, I still really enjoyed reading. So I really want to go back to that in May. I want to enjoy reading. I want to have fun. So I have like a whole mishmash of books. I'm not going to hold myself to this. I mean, I never really do, but I'm going to try and just really read whatever I want and let my heart decide. I know that sounds so silly and so dumb, but like truly I just need like my heart to pick the books and not like my brain. I don't need my brain trying to like make video ideas and content out of books all the time. I just need to read whatever I'm feeling. So that is what May is about. Hopefully falling back in love with just fun reading because April I had a great reading month and I think it's because <laughs> I actually had fun while reading <laughs> and I was actually reading like things I wanted to read and not just books that I felt like I had to. Now with all that rambling and nonsense out of the way, let's talk about some of the books that I am excited to read this month. I do have some like book club stuff to go over but the rest is just gonna be you know, up to me. Uh, if I get to these, I get to them. If I don't, I don't. First up is my Patreon book club read for May. We are reading Revenge by Yoko Ogawa. This is like a short story collection. It has 11 short stories inside of it and I believe all the short stories are interconnected, which I love because that's how Goth by Otsuichi is done and goth is one of my favorite short story collections of all time. So I have really high hopes that this is going to read a lot like goth. I think this will be a very interesting book club read. I think we will have a really fun discussion about it and I feel like we'll all have different opinions which always makes for a very lively discussion and I think a better discussion because I like when we don't all agree. I don't know, it's more fun when like people have varying opinions. I will probably get to this closer to the end of the month. That's usually what I do with my book club picks. I wait until the end of the month so it's fresh on my mind for the live discussion and then it's easier for me to talk about because if I read this at the beginning of the month I will not remember it for the live discussion. So very excited about this one and I hope that it's a winner. Then we have Sisters of the Lost Nation by Nick Medina. This is on my 24 for 2024, but also this is the May book club pick for the Literally Dead book club hosted by Kayla or Books and Lala. And I am so excited because April was the first time I've actually been able to read the book before 
they had their live discussion and I was able to like participate in the discussion and that was like super exciting for me. I always miss the live because I'm, I never read the book in time, but since this is on my 24 for 2024, I feel like this is the perfect push because I'm doing really well with that challenge and I've been reading a lot of the books on that list and I feel like I don't want to stop my momentum and I think this one sounds very interesting. I don't really remember what it's about. I'm so sorry. I swear I don't remember anything about books half the time. A young native girl's hunt for answers about the women mysteriously disappearing from her tribe's reservation leads her to delve into the myths and stories of her people, all while being haunted herself. So I have said this so many times, but I love books that are centered around missing people or disappearances. I am just so fascinated by that and it's something that I really enjoy and I know when a book says that that's like a big part of the plot, I'm always very interested and so I have really high hopes for this. I think it's like, I don't know, I've seen mixed opinions if this is horror or if this is like a mystery thriller. I've seen some people say it's horror, I've seen some people say that don't go in expecting horror. So I feel like this one's kind of all over the place. I'm not really sure what to expect. I have high hopes. I think it'll be a really, really fun read and I really hope I get to this one. Another book I have really, really high hopes for is Natural Beauty by Ling Ling Huang. I have heard nothing but the most high praise for this book and I am so excited to read it. I feel like if I don't read any of these other books on my TBR, this one will definitely be read. And I know it has to do with like beauty, but I don't know too much about the actual plot and I kind of want to keep it that way only because the amount of things that I've heard in terms of like people's enjoyment for this one, I just don't want to spoil it for myself. I just feel like I will have a better time reading it if I don't know too much. It just says that natural beauty follows a young musician into an elite beauty obsessed world where perfection comes at a staggering cost and I really really enjoy that books are kind of focusing on beauty, beauty standards, society's idea of beauty. It's something that I've noticed a lot of horror books are talking about recently so I just think that the commentary will be really really good in this one and I, I'm really really excited. I've seen so many so many positive things so I just have really really high high hopes. This book was also one that I was hoping I was going to get to in April and I just never got to slip it in and that is Night Film by Marisha Pessel. This was sent to me by one of my lovely patrons. Thank you so much Vanessa and I have been thinking about reading this book for the longest time. This is also one that I believe a lot of people have raved about. I don't know the plot of this. I'm gonna be totally honest. I haven't read a single plot description of this book. I know it's mixed media and I know it's like a thriller but I really have no idea what else it's about. Ashley Cordova, the mysterious gifted daughter of the reclusive film director Stanless Cordova, is found dead in an abandoned warehouse in Lower Manhattan. Her death is ruled a suicide but veteran investigative journalist Scott McGrath suspects otherwise. What happened to Ashley? As McGrath tries to uncover the truth, he is drawn into a spellbinding quest into the underworld of the Cordova family's life. So this sounds very interesting. I don't know really what to expect. I'm assuming more of like a mystery thriller vibe. It kind of sounds like a movie, honestly. This is one of those books that I'll probably like be able to see like a movie playing in my head. I think the plot sounds really interesting, so we'll see if I am able to slip it in this month. I feel like I'm in a really big romance mood right now, which I feel like I really want to take advantage of because I'm never really in a huge romance mood. Sometimes romance feels interesting to me, but a lot of times I just don't 
care. Like, I love romance, but I have to really be in the mood to read it. So I feel like since I am in a romance mood, I really need to take advantage of this opportunity. So one of the books that I will 100% be reading this month is Funny Story by Emily Henry. I love Emily Henry. I think she is incredibly talented. She is one of those authors that I feel like every book by her completely captures my attention and even if I don't love everything about the book, I'm just locked from the first page until the end of the book. And what I really like about Emily Henry and her romance books, it feels like that there's so much more going on. I had this conversation with my patrons on reading sprints, but there's so many layers and there's so much more depth to the story in an Emily Henry romance. And I feel like that's why I connect so deeply to her books and I will buy anything she writes. I just feel like there's, there's, so, there's so much to unpack and the characters are so layered and real and while I love a good, silly, goofy romance, little rom-com moment, I love those books, but there's something special about Emily Henry and her romance books. I just can't help myself, so I don't know what funny story's about, didn't read the plot. I just knew from the moment that she announced she was writing and releasing a new book that I was going to buy it, so yes, I will definitely be finally reading the new Emily Henry. I wish I had read it last month, but this month is fine too. And if I'm still in a romance mood and I still feel that pull, that draw to some sweet little love vibes, I think I will pick up Done and Dusted by Lila Sage. I feel like this book has been everywhere. I feel like so many people have been talking about it. I was influenced by Stephanie Bookish here on YouTube. I saw her read this in a reading vlog and it just seemed so fun and cute and I have never read a Yeehaw romance. I'm not like a country country boy romance kind of gal. I don't know. It doesn't really call to me, but for whatever reason, this sounds like so much fun. And it also has a trope that I really enjoy where it's the older brother's best friend is the love interest. So I feel like that kind of sold me. I don't know. There's something about this that makes me want to read it. <laughs> I have no idea. It's just calling to me. So if I'm still in the romance mood and I still feel like dabbling a little bit, I feel like after Miss Emily Henry, I will try and pick Done and Dusted up. So last month in April, my patrons and I had a movie night. We call them Sinister Cinemas, but because of some previous movie nights, we've had like really rough picks. We decided to do a Studio Ghibli double feature. We watched Kiki's Delivery Service and Spirited Away, and Spirited Away is like my favorite movie of all time. I love that movie with like a burning passion. I could watch it every day of my life and never get tired of it. I love all Studio Ghibli's, but Spirited Away has like a special place in my heart. And my second favorite is probably Howl's Moving Castle. And I have Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones here on my TBR. I'm pretty sure this is also on my 24 for 2024. I know this is pretty different than the movie, that's what I've heard, but Something I've wanted to do this year is pick up some like cozy fantasy books. I'm not a fantasy reader. I don't really want to be a high fantasy reader. That's not something I'm interested in. It's not something that feels like me. I don't think it's something for me, but something that does feel like it could be for me is cozy fantasy. And I really want to do like a cozy fantasy reading vlog where I try out some popular cozy fantasy books and see if I can get into the fantasy genre, you know? I really want to start with Howl's Moving Castle. I think that since I already have the basis covered from loving the movie, I feel like experiencing the book will be really interesting and really different. And I feel like this is a very safe option for cozy fantasy. I feel like this is a very like neutral pick. I don't feel like I would have too hard of a time reading this anyways, but I really hope I like it. If you have any cozy fantasy recommendations for me, please let me know. I want like witchy, fun, 
I don't know, like nothing too complex, obviously. If you have any, let me know. But I think I will be starting with Howl's Moving Castle. An arc I have, this is the main character by Jacqueline Goldis. This is coming out the 21st of May and I was sent this from Atria. It says a best-selling thriller author gifts her employee with a luxury train trip but all is not what it appears to be. So this is a modern take on Agatha Christie apparently and I've never read Agatha Christie. I've never had a draw to read Agatha Christie or a want or like a need or like a, a pull to pick up one of her books but I do know that you know she is like the queen of mystery. I do really enjoy when books kind of do a modern take on Agatha Christie. It's like I get a little peek into what I'm missing with Agatha Christie, but I don't have to read Agatha Christie. So I will probably not read too much about this one. I think I will probably just go in not knowing and see what it's about. I do have another book by this author uh, the Chateau. I was sent that one as well and I haven't gotten to that one either. So hopefully I really enjoy this one because I did hear a lot of mixed opinions on the Chateau. So we'll see if this one is a winner. Another new release that I really want to get to in this month is We Used to Live Here by Marcus Clywer. This is coming out next month on the 18th of June and I put this in my anticipated releases video that I just posted a few days ago. I'll have it linked if you haven't seen it, but this was a Reddit story that is now being published as a full-length novel, which is something that I always happened to stumble across by accident. It says it's the turn of the key meets Parasite, and I've never read the turn of the key, but Parasite is an excellent movie. All I had to read was that it was getting pitched as being similar to Parasite and I was really just sold. It's about two homeowners whose lives are turned upside down when the house's previous residents unexpectedly visit. So I think this one sounds like it could be really creepy, really eerie. I hope it really does truly give Parasite vibes and it is similar to that movie because if it is, this could be a five-star read for me. Like this truly could be a new favorite and I hate saying that because new releases have been so hit or miss for me recently but this one really 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 could just be what I've been wanting and missing and looking for and I'm nervous. I should knock on wood shouldn't I? Knock on wood because I don't know if I trust myself but I'm hopeful. I'm really hopeful Fingers crossed. And the last two books on my TBR are from my book subscription services. Something that I'm trying to do this year is read the books that I get from subscription services. I'm trying monthly to read one book of the month book and one aardvark book. So the book of the month book that I think will be the easiest for me to pick up this month is going to be Annie Bot by Sierra Greer. One, this is very short, which... <laughs> I love a short book. I have a better time picking up shorter books because they're less daunting for me. And two, I actually really want to read this one. I've heard really, really great things. So what I believe this book is about is the character Annie Bot, who is an AI. She was created to be the perfect girlfriend and her human owner, I guess, just doesn't treat her very well. I, I, I don't know too much, but I guess we're following their relationship and how he treats her and how she, you know, does things for him. And I think she becomes more aware of like what's going on. And I think it's a very interesting concept. So I'm very intrigued to see what this book is going to be like and to see if I enjoy it because it feels a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I feel like that's a good thing for me right now. I feel like I need to read books that are out of my comfort zone. And then the aardvark book that I think I might pick up is Where You End by Abbott Collar. I don't know if I'm pronouncing this author's name correctly. I think this is kind of like a horror thriller vibe. It says it's Donna Tartt meets David Lynch, which is very interesting, but it's a debut inspired by true events. An unusual form of amnesia derails the lives of identical twins, forcing them to face the indelible, dangerous shadow of the past. 
I don't know, but the amnesia identical twin thing, it intrigued me, okay? Sounds weird, sounds a little odd. The inspired by true events kind of intrigues me as well, I can't lie. Anytime something like a movie or something says that. We'll see if this ends up being the aardvark pick that I read because I do have a few more on my shelves that I could lean more towards at a different time in the month, so I have no idea. But as of right now, this one is intriguing me and I think I could hopefully enjoy it. I don't know. Okay, that is it for my May TBR. It is long. It is excessive. <laughs> it's probably not gonna get done. <laughs> So I don't know if this was a pointless video, but I really like making TBR videos. I like talking to you all about the books that I think I might read during the month. I think it's fun. I like getting the opportunity for you all to tell me what you might be reading for the month. I don't know. I just think these videos are fun. Even if I'm a mood reader and my TBR goes out the window the second week of the month, I still have fun sitting down talking to you all about these books because that's all I really like to do anyways is sit down and talk to you all about books. So if I can make a video that I get to do that in and the video is fun for me, then it's a win-win. I do have some fun things that I'm going to try to do this month. I have a new series that I am going to be starting on my channel that I'm really, really, really excited about, and I think it'll be really fun, and hopefully you all do too, so be on the lookout for that. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. It lets me know that you like these chatty videos and you want to see them in the future. If you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I also have a Patreon linked down in the description box. We can become friends, talk about books, horrifying books, thrilling books, romance books, manga, all that good fun stuff. And with that being said, I hope you're having a great day, night, morning, afternoon, wherever you are, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!